All of you are aware of the activities which our museum organizes throughout the year. Like science fair, science seminar, science drama, etc., etc. So many programs are there. And this is a very special type of program for the school children, especially, who, who are very curious to know about any new subject. Now today we have with us Dr. Ramboresh Goswami. Let me introduce uh, uh, him with a few words. Dr. Ramboresh Goswami, he did his Bachelor of Mechanical Engineering from Jadavpur University and then PhD from Northwestern University, Chicago, USA. Then he worked uh, for four years in INRIA, France. And at present, from 2002 onwards, at present, he is a researcher, Holder Research Institute, California, USA. Now he, he is having very special interest in dynamics and control balance of human oil robots. So my dear students, uh, you are aware that today the topic is human oil robots and Dr. Uh, Dr. Ambudish Goswami uh, has taken the dais. Now he is ready to speak you something about the robots, human oil robots. Now, first of all, let us welcome him, giving him a very, big, very, very big hand. Thank you. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Um, there are uh, many technical terms in the, about robotics, so I will, in general, speak in English. However, if you have any questions, either in English or in Bengali, you can stop me anytime you want even in the middle of the talk. So there is absolutely no problem. And let me also tell you that I used to sit on that side uh, many, many times, but many years ago. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for me to come back and stand on the other side. So thank you very much. All right, so um, uh, the topic is robots to human and robots. Uh, can you see till the bottom of the, of the screen? Okay. <coughs> so um, the first question. So I I work in Honda Research, and Honda Research makes uh, we we are proud to say the world's most advanced humanoid robots. Um, so I will show you a quick video of uh, what the humanoid robot can do. Its name is Asimo. Uh, it has not yet come to this city, but it has come to uh, New Delhi and many other uh, science museums in in the world. So, you can come here. So this was a robotic show in San Francisco. Um, I, I took the picture. I was in the audience, so I took the picture. So this is a human eye robot. It's about uh, this size from the from here. And about 50 kilograms in, in weight. And it can, it can uh, climb these stairs, so it will do that. Um, Right now, so right now it's, it has two cameras. It is looking at the stairs and trying to judge how high they are, and then it will start walking. So there is no human being inside. Okay, it's a it's really a machine. So the battery is in the in the stomach. Here is the battery. The computer is in the backpack. Everyone can hear me, right? Yes. yes, yes. Okay. So this is more difficult task. Going down the stairs is more difficult. Most people fall down when going down the stairs. So it's extra careful. So 
Can give one some applause also. Very, very happy. So this is the result of almost uh, more than 20 years of research. And so, so this is ASIMO. I will come back to ASIMO and human and robots in the end, but I wanted to give you an idea of what is the field of robotics right now, mostly with a lot of uh, animations and videos. So first question is, what is a robot? This is the first question. I'm sorry? Its height is about this. Um, four feet. Yes, about four feet. So, um, there were previous versions of um, Honda robots which were much taller. I will sh show you some pictures later. Um, so first thing, a robot is a machine. Okay. And the machine must be able to move by itself. So you have to remember this, especially the school children. I am going to ask you a question about this after. The robot does useful, boring or dangerous task and it helps people. It doesn't get tired because it's a machine. It may run out of battery, but it doesn't get tired. It can sense, it has sensors, like camera or other sensors, and it can make decisions. This is a very, very important property of a robot. And it can be programmed or reprogrammed in the computer to do different things. If it is doing the same thing each time, then it's not a robot. Then it's just a non-robotic machine. So these are the characteristics of a robot. OK, you have memorized this, right? So test number one. Is a car a robot? No. Car is not a robot. And car is not a robot because it cannot go all by itself. Someone has to drive it. Then it's not a robot. However, there are robot cars. There are cars. Right now, um, um, there is a, actually a robotic car competition. The car drives by itself for um, 50 kilometers in the middle of the desert and uh, carved roads all by itself. It has cameras, um, sonar sensors, all kinds of sensors, laser tracker sensors, um, wheel velocity sensor, all kinds of sensors, and a lot of computers inside. And it senses everything, but it should be able to drive for 50 kilometers by itself. So there are some robotic cars, but normal cars are not robots. OK. Number two, is a washing machine, the like clothes washing machine, is that, can that be called a robot? Yeah. Yeah. That cannot be called a robot. It's because it does only one thing repeatedly. You cannot reprogram it to do pooping, for example. It's not possible. And also, it cannot make any decision. So this will be a homework. Is a lift a robot? You go and press a button and it takes you to another floor. It can be a little bit reprogrammed to take it to different floors. But it doesn't really make any decision. So you can think about these things. Is a computer a robot? Computer doesn't really move. It can sit and do very intelligent things, but it doesn't really move. If you have a toy car or a toy plane, um, can you call them robots? There are some very sophisticated toy cars now. You can drive them by remote control, and you can go quite a far distance. Uh, your brother or sister, they seem to be quite automatic. They can make decisions. They can do many inter intelligent things. Can they be called robots? No. no. Robots have to be machine. Human beings cannot be called robots. So how do robots look like? So the answer to my question is here. How do robots look like? These are, they are all robots. All of them are robots. So robots don't look like anything in particular. So this is a humanoid robot. This is a called a manipulator robot. When um, the cars are made, these manipulator robots car, come and weld the cars very quickly, much faster than human beings can do. This is a snake robot. This is another manipulator robot. 
this is a robot with a wheel. It goes and helps doctors in, in hospitals. It goes on the hallway, on the corridor, goes inside a lift, goes to another floor, presses button. Uh, so it's quite sophisticated. This is a one-legged robot. It's a hopping robot, one leg, so you cannot walk. If you, if you have only one leg, only way to move is jump, jump, jump. It's made by Toyota, the big car company. This is a chair robot. So this is the answer to wheelchairs. So if uh, I don't want to walk, I can sit on a wheelchair. Or maybe in few years, this is a, I have sat on one of these. It's a little bit scary because it's quite high, and the robot walks with it. But the very important thing is wheelchair needs plane, it needs a wheel, right? So it needs plain floor. Um, a chair with legs don't need plane. It can walk on stairs, on rocks, anywhere. That is the advantage of walking with legs, in fact. So there are submarine robots, uh, dog robots. This is the most successful commercially sold robot right now. It's a vacuum cleaner. It's called Roomba. And it has been sold almost uh, 1 million by now. So it's the size of a disk, and it's getting better and better every year. So you can turn it on and leave it, leave, leave your home. And when you come back, it has gone everywhere and picked up, picked up all the darts of the floor and cleaned everything. So this is Roomba. Um, these are doll robots made by Sony. It used to be, uh, so Sony doesn't make any robots anymore on the desktop. But it's called Ibo, different versions of dog robots. They are quite intelligent, actually. Um, this is a robot plane. A robot plane meaning this is a plane with no pilots inside. These are called drones. So they can go and take photo and uh, this is a robot arm, robot hand. This is a scorpion robot. So basically, my, I, what I want to say is that robots don't have any particular look. They can be anything. It can be a car. It can be anything. Right? OK, the origin of the word robot. So it is due to this person. His name is uh, Karel Tapek. He's the Czech author. So in 1920s, if I remember correctly, he wrote a book um, and where he imagined that machine humans are, are going to do all our boring or dangerous work. Uh, and he used the word robota to, use, to uh, name the machine humans. And they, now we call them robots. So Asimov actually, as a gratitude to basically originating the name, goes and gives power to uh, Mr. Karel Katek in, in Czechoslovakia couple of years ago. Why are robots made? To do dangerous activities that we don't want to do. They help us do the work that can cause injury. Repetitive activities. How many of you have seen modern times by Charlie Chaplin? If you have seen, you know repetitive work can do really, really bad things to people. So in, in, in modern times, um, the actor was tightening nut all day. Same thing. That's his only job. A conveyor will goes and there are nuts. This is what he's doing all day. And after the bell rings at 5 PM, his job is done. Even if he's walking, he keeps doing that because he cannot stop. And human beings are not made for that kind of activity. Although sometimes we need to do, we require to do, but we are not, we have brain. So we are we are made for doing different things. So robots can do all the repetitive things because it doesn't have to think. So we can do more interesting things. Uh, robots can do work which are too boring and interest, uninteresting. So do you have any um, examples of work that is boring or un uninteresting? For the adults, I please don't include coming to work as boring or uninteresting job. Think of some, <laughs> some different examples. Um, so sometimes you may say doing homework is going around interesting. So robots are not going to help you with that. Uh, but however, there are work which are actually quite boring. So tightening nuts all day is actually quite boring or, or uninteresting. So robots can do all these all this things. And some work that needs extraordinary precision. So brain surgery, for example, or eye surgery. If you make even a millimeter mistake, uh, that's the difference between success and failure. And 
doctors are very good, but their skills have a large range. So if a doctor one day is bad, then the quality of surgery can become inferior. Robots are not as good as doctors, but their accuracy is same every day. So this is the difference between a manual photographic camera and an automatic photographic camera. A manual camera, if you are very good, you can take very good pictures. With, a, with an automatic camera, every day you take similar quality picture if you, if you are in the program mode. So very precise work, robots are very good. So robots are already doing uh, brain surgery. So if there is a tumor deep inside the brain, a very small, very precise robot can drill a hole on the skull and actually insert a needle, go all the way and take out the tumor, which is very difficult for uh, surgeons to do. And work that needs extraordinary power, so heavy lifting, loading, these kinds of things robots can do. Now, everyone will ask the next question, do robots compete with human? And my answer is there is not really any simple answer. Um, sometimes yes and sometimes no. Sometimes robots do compete with human and sometimes they don't. And similar to computers, computers also sometimes compete with human and sometimes they don't. They do different things that we normally cannot do. And this is true for all, all new technology. This is not particular for robot, robots. All new technologies have a competing, competitive side and a helping side. And you should think about that because it's very important. Any new technology will raise this question. And I think in the end, we all benefit. Now, some people don't benefit. So one, one interesting situation is, imagine that you are in the period just before the beginning of automobile, right? So you're making um, uh, cow-driven cars or horse-driven cars, and suppose you are very good in making the wheel, the, the wooden wheel, and you are number one in the world, everyone comes and buys the wheels. So next day, someone invents a, a machine, which is a car, you put petrol in it, it goes all by itself. So your business is completely ruined. So you're going to say it's a bad thing, but after some time, you can judge whether it's a good thing that you have cars or it was better if you still had um, ox-driven car or, or horse-driven car. So technology has good and bad sides, but I think if we can apply it correctly in the end, everyone benefits. But it has to be done in a, in a good way. Okay. So I would like you to think about what you want the robot to do for you. And, and why. So this is just for thinking. And let me move on and let us explore um, all the different types of robots that exist. So next few few slides will have a lot of videos of different types of robots, just to give you an idea. So this robot is an explorer robot. Its name is Dante. It was uh, made by Carnegie Mellon University. And it was meant to explore craters, volcano craters in Arctic and eventually perhaps to send in another planet. So unfortunately, this robot died. It did go to, a, to an Arctic crater, but it toppled and fell down, and it could not be recovered. But it's, it's quite big. It's almost the size of uh, the, the city here. Um, last time, when a NASA, NASA spacecraft went to Mars, this robot actually went there, which uh, recovered some stones and, and some dark. Um, sorry? Red robot. Yes. Uh, yes, exactly. So, that's so, yeah. so, that's so okay. Red robot. Right. Mars, Mars City is from, from, uh, No, this is one from two, two years ago. Two years ago. And, uh, okay, so this is Roomba. Uh, this is a vacuum cleaner robot you have seen. This is a surgery robot system. It's called the Da Vinci system. So it can, the patient is lying here. The doctor doing the surgery is actually here. He is looking into the computer and looking at the CAT scan or X-ray, three-dimensional three X-ray um, of the person, whichever organ, maybe the knee surgery, maybe some uh, other surgery. And the doctor does the planning here. Um, all the digital data of the patient is stored in the computer, which is very, very expensive. So only, only big hospitals can afford it, but hopefully the price will come down. So the accuracy is extremely good. These are snake robots. Um, they don't have any particular utility, except that some research, researchers thought that it may be interesting to make snake robots. And I have some quick videos to, to see what these robots. So this was made in uh, Tokyo Tech in, uh, in Japan. Is it so each, each of 
this axis, they have, there is a motor inside. Now, I don't know if you call this useful task or not, but uh, you can do this. <laughs> Okay, let's look at this one. These are called micro flyer robots. So just size of almost a mosquito. It can potentially have a small camera on it. I, I don't think this this one has, but it can have a small camera. It can fly over. It can be controlled. So they can be um, very useful for, for example, there is one building where nobody can go because there is some danger or something. Um, you can actually send these micro flyers. They can go maybe near the window and take a picture and come back. Or maybe directly transmit. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of different applications um, for this type of robot. This is a um, robot, it's a, it's a type of wheel. This is a wheel, but a uh, little bit different. Only the spokes of the wheel are there. So, people try to imitate different kinds of uh, insects. And they are very robust. It's very difficult to topple them. Even if they topple, it's kind of symmetric top and, and, and bottom. So they can turn over and keep walking. And muddy or sandy area, no problem. It has an antenna, so it can send information. And so it, it has a camera, so you can see this is the view from the robot. Okay. And another one. It is trying to climb the vertical wall. And then it has sticky, sticky tape, like cellular type of wheel, so it can climb. Um, this is actually quite uh, amazing. When I first saw it, it was hard for me to believe. So watch it carefully. So here there are very small pins, like alpins. So it can climb an almost plain wall. So this is like cockroaches. Cockroaches, cockroach legs have very sharp, hard, and very small pins. So even the wall that appears plain for us, there are extremely small holes, and cockroaches can grab those holes and, and go off. So this uh, robot mimics that. So they actually study cockroaches. Let me stop. Oh, sorry. So this is a 
similar one. Um, again, you see these uh, small stone chips looks like they are actually plain. If you see from a distance, you see right now. This robot is more sophisticated but slower than, than the previous one. So you see from a distance, the wall is quite plain. So someone has to make that, so these are called bio-inspired robots. Someone has to make that observation that how do cockroaches climb plain walls? And had to actually study it and look at those tiny pins and said, okay, maybe, maybe I can make a machine, it can you know, carry some weight to the wall. And someone has to study that. So that observation is very critical. Okay, so there are uh, fish robots, um, and these robots are, of course, they are, we have read about them in Tintin comics many, many years ago, right? And um, fish-like wheel, uh, fish-like um, robot, and submarine robots. So these are also robots. And this is uh, one researcher made a snake robot and dropped it in water, and uh, just see what he does inside water. So it's a similar robot like the snake robot, but they are very well sealed so that the water doesn't get in. Okay, so this is a, the famous drone robot, um, drone robot or drone, drone airplane. And this one uh, is the first, as far as I know, flapping bird. So normally the planes don't flap their wings, right? Birds flap their wings. So this is a flapping, flapping wing, wing uh, robot. It's made by a friend of mine at MIT, and it, it's really amazing. It, from a distance, it looks really like a bird. And it, as you can see, there's a quite long range. I think this is quite an achievement. It, it can part. So, so this is very interesting that you raised that point. So the, the, the research of this researcher is parching. So he made this bar to prove parching. Yeah. OK, now this is a. Uh, from a, from a company called Boston Dynamics, so they have two different robots, a little dog and a big dog. So the little dog is cute, so I'll show you the little dog first. And the big dog is in the background, it's a little fear, fearful, so I'll show you later. So this is little dog. So this is in slow motion, just to see how the legs are. So people who study four-legged robots, they study the corresponding animal, dog or horse, and see actually how, in which sequence they put their feet. So it can, it can climb some um, rough surface also. So it's not as easy as it looks. So researchers do several months and sometimes years of research to know how to do this correctly. If it is, if it is not done correctly, the robot will just pop up and fall down. So, okay, so that's little dog. Right, so now is the big dog. Um, first time I saw this move, saw this animation, I thought if I'm walking in the forest and something like this come, comes at me, I will be really afraid. Especially if it's in the dark and maybe it has red eyes or something, I will be really afraid. So this is a robot. So of course, uh, the, the defense, uh, military, they are very interested in this for, for carrying loads where people normally won't want to go or maybe it will be dangerous. So they are trying to make it carry larger, larger loads. So 
So this is also extraordinary. Now watch this. And it doesn't fall down. And it's a very fast response. It's quite heavy and it's carrying a lot of heavy loads. That's a, that's a very good technology. So it can go in different terrains, snow or loose, loose soil or, or hard uh, or muddy uh, soft soil. It's having difficult time but it's still not falling down. It doesn't get tired. Battery. <laughs> so this is very slippery ice, actually. <laughs> and, and no one is controlling it right now. It has been programmed to do certain things. And now it is all on its own. Okay, so its weight is 235 pounds, maybe roughly half a uh, kilogram, maybe 110 kilograms. So anyway, another animal to move Okay, so human and robots. So there are human and robots which are small, and human and robots which are big, more like human or boy. So Sony made, um, first of all, made Dream, Dream Robot, and then they made something called Curio, a little bit more advanced version of Dream Robot. Uh, now they don't make anything uh, anymore. Uh, and there are other robots. Uh, Fujitsu made some robots, and some other companies made robots. They are really cute um, doll tag robots, this size. And then there are big. Uh, human and robots. So this is Asimo. Uh, this is Asimo in, in uh, Disneyland. Uh, this is called HRP uh, robot, and this is a Toyota robot. So Toyota makes robots that can play uh, flute and other wind instruments, not with a recorder. They really have a vocal cord, and they can actually blow. So this is one of the technology. Uh, they can blow air and actually play a, an instrument. So they have al almost an orchestra, several different. Um, instrument uh, playing robots. Uh, so this is this one. And so carrying chair robot I saw you before. Some other universities also made different versions of carrying chair. I think this is the most sophisticated. There are carrying, this, is, this will be a wheelchair, um, but a little bit different than conventional wheelchairs. Okay, so these are Toyota, both are Toyota robots. So they are all musicians. Robots can play soccer. So there is actually a worldwide competition every year. It's called RoboCup. Um, it happens in different universities. And the robots actually play soccer. And uh, there are different criteria. And there is a winner at the end. Um, and there are dinosaur robots also. And there is also a rescue effort. So for example, um, if, if there is a mining disaster, um, and the entry of the mining is completely blocked, then think about all those snake robots. They don't need much area. They can go through a small, uh, just opening very small through which human beings cannot go. So if the robot can crawl through some way and take a picture and come back, then the human rescuers can have, a, have some idea of what's going on. Or there's someone alive that's taking a picture. So that, that's going to be immensely um, useful. So this, this is a new area people are getting into um, uh, rescue robot, robotics for uh, earthquake or accidents in mind. So because robots don't have to breathe, right? So if there is some toxic fume, the robots can be sent without any problem. And there are some passive walking robots. So these robots have almost no motor, maybe only one motor um, here, and it can walk all by itself. And I have seen one version of this which has actually no motor. It's a pure mechanical device. It can walk on a slope, uh, not on flat flat plane, because it doesn't have enough kinetic energy or potential energy. However, on a very shallow slope, you can walk for a long distance. So the energy is obtained from the gravitational energy. So it's, it's a remarkable machine with, with no motor. It's 
purely calculation of uh, so it's a, it's a pendulum motion of the leg and it hits and the robot keeps going so that's amazing so this is a one motor version of, of that robot uh, there is exoskeleton robot so you see this person cannot really carry this huge load but there is a robot like thing which is on the outside and so this robotic object is actually pushing uh, pushing on the load so the person can carry a very heavy load almost uh, 50 pounds or 60 pounds uh, I mean 50 kilogram or 60 kilogram uh, so, so this is also a new area exoskeleton so one version of these exoskeleton robots are to help uh, people who have difficulty walking or somewhere they are very weak or maybe there is an injury the sprain their ankle or the knee so you can have an exoskeleton and can, it can help you um, walk and assisting robot so this is the one version of the HRP robot that I mentioned it's, a, it's a almost human size and it is helping this person carrying a table so it depends on which application um, you can think of. So this is also in Japan, in, a, in, a, in an institution called EISC. So robot actually has sensors in the hand. It can sense that it is catching the table. So it, it adjusts its gripping force based on um, where the table is. So if it lets loose, the table will go. So which companies make robots? There are many companies, uh, Adept, Aldebaran in France, this is in the US, Fanac, Fujitsu, Honda, Sony, Toyota, ZMP, there are many companies now that make robots. Um, so some researchers work on human and robotic emotion, right? So they actually are focusing on the face of the robot. So this is a little bit amusing, um, you can see. So this is neutral expression. So I have I have no expression on my face. This is surprise. So the eye eyebrows are a little bit up. So there are small motors back inside with pneumatic cylinders. So There are some versions of this robot now even better. It has more range of um, expressions. So human beings are very good at reading expressions, sadness or anger from other humans. So, and this is a this is an amusing robot also. Uh, let me just show you quickly and then I will talk about Asimo. Um, this one just came out last year. Um, his name is Mowgli. <laughs> yeah, robotic volunteer. Yeah. Again, I don't know if you, you can call this useful task. But yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, it's okay. All right. So uh, this this was a TV advertisement of the Honda Asimo robot in the in the UK, and it's quite interesting. Uh, so they are trying to portray that Asimo is almost a human, it has human-like feeling. So if you if you walk in a big building with lots of machineries and computers, how will you react? So it's like a museum, Massimo is exploring different areas.
Alright, what can Asimo do? So the Honda is a robot. It can move his arms, legs, head, eyes, you have seen that. It has many motors, almost 30 motors all over the body. So very similar to human. So there are three motors at the hip, each hip, just like human beings have three, three degree of freedom at the hip. Uh, one at knee, each knee, and two at the ankle, each ankle. Similarly, three at each shoulder, one at each elbow, and two at each wrist and the Asimo can do this. Um, so each finger, we have a lot of motors in each finger, so Asimo doesn't have that many. It has only one in each hand. In the future version, it may have more. It can see, it has uh, three cameras. It can hear, it has two microphones. It can talk, um, it has a speaker. It can walk, of course. It can balance. So I want to talk about a little bit what is balance. Um, it can climb stairs, you have seen and you can wave goodbye or hello, and it can dance also. So balance is this. So if robot can do anything like this, then it's really good. Look at this. Right. So balance is, is actually quite uh, difficult, and it's, it's one of my research areas. So basically look at this. This is a car, so this is my drawing, so it's not very good. This is a car, or, or the truck. If you, if you look at its center of mass, and if you look at the two extreme contact points with which is touching the floor. If you look at the big red triangle, you see it's a triangle with a very long base. Same thing for a dog, when the dog or four-legged animals are walking. For a human, it's a blunder. Yes, it's a, for, for balance, it's a blunder. So the center of mass is very high. So someone pushes us, we, we fall down much easier. And our feet are too very close. So the angle is very tall and very thin. So it's a, it's, a, it's a mechanical blunder. So in order for us to, um, okay, sorry, this is a different topic. So in order for us to compensate for the mechanical blunder, um, one theory is our brain had to become very sophisticated. Because if you look at this, we'll say we fall down every time, but we actually don't fall very often. Um, it's quite rare occurrence that we actually fall down. So. So the evolutionary biologists, they say that the brain had to work very hard and had to develop in order to compensate for, for this blunder. And observing nature is a very important thing for everybody. So if you look at the footsteps on, on, on sand or on ice, snow, you can tell a lot of things about how the person is walking. And of course, we know detectives use these things to even identify people, but scientists use very similar things. You can actually tell in which side the person is giving more weight, at what time. So lots of things. Observation is very, very critical. So I just wanted to add this, add this picture because of that. OK, now I'll, for the rest of the talk, I'll talk about Asimov. So Asimov's ancestors. So Honda started making Asimov um, in, not Asimov, human robot, in 1986. And this was the first robot that was made, human robot. And there's a long line of robots, and finally, it's in Asimo. So it took, it took a long time. Um, 86 was the beginning. And uh, so this is E0, 1986, the first human art robot. It had no upper body, only the legs. Because if you want a human art robot, first thing is balance. So for balance, you actually don't think first about the upper body. You first think about the legs. If you can make the legs balanced, then you can add upper body. It's like a load. Then there was E1, it's a little bit more sophisticated. Then there is E2, then there is E3. Um, I don't have a picture of E4, uh, there is E5. E6, now it's getting a little better. And after E6, there is P1. So it has something like an upper body. 
and then there was P2 and P3. So P2 was kind of this height, and P3 was little, a little shorter. And after P3, so this is P3, and then there was Asimo. So this is a short video of the history of Asimo, how it was developed. And you see it takes a lot of effort to, to, to make something like this, and a lot of money also. So you can barely walk now. And you of course have to have a crane um, and, and a gantry and a harness because you don't want the robot to fall down every time because it will break all the machines. Now Honda started studying human walking because they wanted the robot to walk as nicely as human because human walking is the most smooth walking. And then uh, stair climbing. Now the speed is quite high. But sometimes failure happens. Every time there is a failure, there is a chance to learn something new. So failure is very good. So it's walking on slow. So it's going to open a door, open and close the door. Now you can see all the motors uh, exposed. So this is P2. It's a little bit shaky at that. So we are continuously updating the technology so um, every time something is being added or some new features are being improved on the robot. Um, Asimo can run right now. Um, do you know the definition of running? How is running different from walking? So running has, running has to have some, yeah, I can see what you say. There has to be some fraction of a second where the body is airborne, is not touching the floor. If that condition is satisfied, then you are running. So it's kind of running. So as you can stay up in the air for a very short time. Uh, and running is, is quite difficult because every time you hit the floor, the robot is, is falling down. So it's quite difficult. It's a very awkward looking run. Okay. And as you can do some other, so as you can bring a tray to a person in a restaurant, for example. Uh, let's see what else is there. Um, okay. So you can read someone's name from the name tag because it has cameras, of course. It is saying hello in, in Japanese. And it's leading the person. So someone came into an office and leading the person to. Yeah. yeah. Who, whom do you want to see or what do you want? So. So this is also a very difficult task. If you know carrying a cup with liquid is not so easy.
And here you can avoid people. So this is in the computer screen. That one has a workspace. It keeps track of what's in front of it. So it can move away from the road. And uh, one of the latest features, um, as someone has so much demand on power, the batteries don't last very long, so it has to recharge itself. Uh, so now it can recharge itself. But it's also a very precise work because uh, the electric outlet has to have a very correct alignment with, with as you know. So here, the wall and this. So now it's happy. Okay, so that's one has a, a lot of description. So if you if you ask me later or if you send me email, I can I can give you uh, any information you want. And so you can carry a tray. Um, you can walk with a tray. You can put a tray on the table. You can handle a cart. And you can move uh, with with human. So if I shake my hand, as you can try to mimic the same thing also. Um, so some uh, specification. You can recognize moving objects. You can recognize posture, so arm posture or arm gesture of human. It can recognize space, it has some range of distinguishing sound, environment recognition, and some network through, through computer uh, with this network. So Honda also, so this is not as much. Honda also makes exoskeleton, I, I showed you before. So these are exoskeleton for helping people, not for carrying heavy loads. These are for uh, weak uh, or, or very old um, people or this mobility. So I actually tried this one uh, some time ago. It's actually quite interesting. It's, uh, it's pushing me upward with maybe, um, <coughs> suppose my weight is 70 kilograms, and it's always pushing me upward with 10 kilograms. So 10 is maybe high, maybe 5 kilograms. So I always feel lighter. Basically, that's the idea. So the effort on my legs are a little bit less. So I, I was wearing this, I was going down the stairs and up the stairs. It's actually quite helpful. <coughs> so workers in automobile industry, they have to you know that it's very difficult to stay like this for a long time. It's extremely uh, hard for the leg muscles. So, and they have to do it for a long time. So if you have a machine that is just giving you an upward force of 5 or 10 kilograms continuously, the leg muscles are working that much less. So it's, it's, they are very happy with this. And there is a different uh, exoskeleton. It's uh, only two motors from the hip joint. And uh, there are some patients and uh, Honda is uh, working with them. To give them a little bit more trust for walking. So this is also a completely new field. Finally, uh, I don't know how many of you know Honda uh, makes planes also. Uh, it's, a, it's a jet plane, very small, but it's a jet plane. And Honda, Honda also makes uh, um, steamer uh, engines also. So anything that moves. Um, and I will show you the last video. Um, I hope I'm within time. So last video, this was also from the same uh, Technical festival in San Francisco where ASMO will finally say goodbye and leave, and the children will become very sad. Uh, my son was there also, and so ASMO is also crying with the children. The children are saying, Don't go, don't go, stay here. But it's a 15 minute program, so ASMO has to leave. So it slowly walk. it can walk backwards, like someone pointed out. So people stand in long lines to see a 15 minute show. You want to see it again? Okay. So these motions are made by engineers just to make it a little bit more fun for, for children.
Okay. So that ends my talk, and uh, I'll be very happy to ask any questions you have, either in Bengali or in English. I was hoping someone will stand up and give me a very difficult question during the lecture, but no one did. But now I can ask them very difficult questions. So thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Bhushwami, uh, for a wonderful lecture. I hope that everybody has enjoyed. Even the elderly people who are here, the mechanical engineers, electronic engineers, so many engineers are here. So they enjoyed a lot out of this lecture. And the students also, you have enjoyed it? Yes. Do you have any question to ask me, please? No? Don't be shy. Don't any questions? Yes. Yes. It is not solved. Not yet, no. It's working in museums and sometimes some very big companies, uh, they take leave. So, yes. It's very expensive, they need to take leave. Uh, so it's not so yet. It's very expensive. So it, as you know that when things are, cast, the, things are mass produced, the price comes down very quickly. So SMA is not mass produced, it's almost made one by one. So it's extremely expensive. So hopefully in the future. Yeah. Hmm. Good afternoon, good afternoon, sir. I wanted to ask that what are the future prospects of the robotics? Are the robots are going to overpower the humans? This is, this is the basic question for right. all of us. I, I think that. Mm -hmm. Well, whether robots can overpower human or not, I cannot answer that. So that is to be seen. So there are of course many science fiction movies, right? The robots are overpowering. So question is, so this is a this becomes a philosophical question. But can human beings make something that is smarter than human beings. So, and I have no idea, honestly. I do not know the answer to that question. Uh, I, can, I can tell you that I think the robots can come very close. Uh, maybe not, so this is something interesting. Things we think are easy, it's difficult for machines and computers to do. And things that we find very difficult, it's very easy for machines and computers to do. For example, if you ask me to do 1 million addition per second, I cannot do it ever. For computers, it's very easy. And they will increase that capability every, every year, every month. However, a two-year-old child can recognize almost 1,000 faces, human face. For computers, even to recognize one face is extremely, extremely difficult. Then things that we call common sense are very easy. Or us. That's why we call them common sense. For computers, it's almost impossible what is common sense. So maybe the robots are not going to be similar to humans. Maybe they will have different capabilities because they are their machines. Um, of course, researchers are working on building common sense to robots, uh, but it's, it's still extremely difficult. So I think they are going to go in different directions. And my hope, of course, is uh, it's not going to be a competition. It's going to be a, a collaboration or, or, or assist. So, but I do not know the basic question that whether it will ever overpower human beings or not. I don't know. Thank you, sir. Sure. We hope to be a collaboration with the robots, okay, and <laughs> not to overpower us. Now, Dr. Goswami. Uh, uh, we are very much grateful to you for a wonderful lecture. Now our director, he was asking me to request you uh, to come over uh, this museum anytime, whenever you like, okay. so that we can bring many children to watch this uh, and to hear this wonderful lecture. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yeah. It's been a pleasure for me.